Yes, the title of this video is 100% legit. What you're seeing on the screen right now is a PlayStation 4 running Linux and Steam VR. And as much as I wish this could be clickbait or a bad joke, unfortunately, it isn't. Dobry wieczór wszystkim, I'm Mystical. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today as we go back to trying to run Steam VR in the worst possible ways. We've already pretty much done it on an Android phone and it was somewhat playable. Let me warn you, this one is so, so, so much worse. With that being said, I think I need to take you guys back to the beginning. So in case somehow it wasn't already obvious, this is a PlayStation 4. The PlayStation 4 does not run Linux. It runs an operating system that has been specially created by Sony, a secure operating system that will not allow us to install additional applications that are not from the Sony store. In case this also wasn't obvious, Steam isn't on the PlayStation store. So how on earth are we going to get Steam and Steam VR running on the PlayStation 4? Well, the PlayStation 4, at its very heart, is a computer. It's got an APU running x86 architecture, which is already more than our phone had, as that was running ARM and we had to jump through emulation. This should be able to run native x86 code, and it's got RAM, which we should be able to allocate to VRAM as well. So if we can somehow get a Linux kernel onto it, we should be able to boot Linux. And thankfully, there's an entire community based around this, and there's a jailbreak. This is where V11 comes in. V11 being the essential version of the PS4 that you have to be on in order to be able to do this. In case for whatever reason you want to follow along, which please do not, you need to be on V11 or lower on your PlayStation 4. This isn't my PlayStation 4, I just happened to be going to my cousin's place for the weekend, found out they have a PlayStation 4, checked the version number, and it looks like they just don't update, which is good for me. So we got to work. We tried replacing the mechanical hard drive inside with an SSD, but we only had a much smaller SSD, so the cloning process failed, and we had to go with the hard drive. I highly recommend replacing a hard drive in your PS4 with an SSD if you want to do this for reasons that will become very, very obvious very, very fast. First thing you will need to do once you have V11 is jailbreak the console. This actually turned out to be quite simple. Even if you have to complete the process a few times, my cousin had Linux on his PC, so we just downloaded PP Pawn UI, connected the PS4 to the computer using an Ethernet cable, and pawned it using PPPoE settings inside the PlayStation 4. Actually, quite simple. After this, we needed to connect using FileZilla and transfer a few things onto the PlayStation 4 using FTP. This is because, well, we need a Linux installer on the PlayStation 4. I watched a few tutorials online and settled on Fedora 38 and downloaded the kernel that matches my Southbridge, because there are three different Southbridges on the PlayStation 4. And depending on which one you have, you may or may not be able to install to the hard drive and you may have to boot from a USB, which sounds like like utter pain. Thankfully, our South Bridge supported hard drive booting. So we transferred all the files using FTP, and unfortunately, when we tried running the payload, it didn't work. Thankfully, there are a bunch of different BZ images that you can try download for the PlayStation 4. And when I downloaded an alternative one, that actually worked first try, and we got booted into the rescue shell. Now that we were finally here, it was time to connect our keyboard. Thankfully, we had found the perfect one for this job. <laughs> Inside the rescue shell, you have to run one command, which will essentially ask you how much gigabytes you want to allocate to your Linux install. I typed in 200, and it will start installing Linux to the hard drive. It was actually that simple. This took quite some time, probably because the hard drive was clicking, which tells me that it was failing, However, it did end up working. Once this was done, we were booted into a black screen. Turns out you need to unplug the HDMI cable, plug it back in, press Control alt f 2 and then Control alt f one which will turn on the rescue shell and then boot you back into the GUI. And wow, we were inside the Linux GUI on a PlayStation 4, and it was working. We typed in the password, which in our case was PS4 Linux, and we got greeted by the desktop. I was already very impressed here. However, this is where the issues basically started as uh, it was very, very slow. Ignore all that fancy stuff, that's just, uh, that's meant to be there. We had to create some swap in order to allocate a bit more RAM to the PlayStation 4. Installing Steam wasn't an issue because it actually came installed, however, we did decide to uh, try some non-VR games first. It actually ran 
fairly okay. I mean, I was very surprised here. Having watched Bringa Studios throughout the last few weeks, which definitely inspired this video, let's just say I expected this to run a whole lot worse. Now, this could be due to a number of different factors, but I'm gonna put it down to kernel differences and as well the fact that we didn't try the same titles. Minecraft actually ran at around 200 FPS, and yes, it did dip quite a few times. However, I would say 150, 130-ish on all lowest settings, of course, with Optifine installed. However, that was with world generation happening on the broken hard drive and the CPU doing the world generation. So that definitely could have been increased by running a server. And the forest actually turned on. So that's pretty impressive. Not only did the forest launch, it also worked surprisingly well. Faster. Ty, ale działa, żeby nie było, nie? Ej, 30 FPS w solidne. 19 czasami. Ale takie, to są takie spadki, wiesz. That is, on the very lowest possible resolution, on the very lowest possible graphical settings. But it did play, and I would have actually played this if I had no other choice. Next, we tried a title that basically everyone in the comment section constantly asks me to try when we do these experiments, and that is VRChat. And I'm not surprised if we had a way of running this game. On low-end hardware, that would give a lot more people access to PC VR worlds and PC VR avatars. And I'm happy to say, here you guys go. VRChat PlayStation 4 Edition. This one actually ran also surprisingly well. Yes, the worlds did take an absolutely insane time to load, but I'm gonna bring that down to that internal hard drive. After they were loaded and took a few seconds to render in, the game was somewhat playable. I would say 26, 30 frames per second. Now, that isn't to say we were gonna be running it in VR at that frame rate, but on flat screen, yeah, you could technically play through this, especially in a world that had maybe less particles and less players in it. So with seeing how these games performed, let's just say I was quite hopeful. Oh boy, was I not ready for the hellhole I was about to dive into. First of all, Installing SteamVR was actually quite simple. SteamVR natively supports Linux. You don't even need the Proton compatibility layer that you need in order to run Windows-only games through Steam on Linux. That layer has gotten a lot of updates and it actually runs quite well now, but thankfully we didn't need it for SteamVR, as that would just be an additional thing that could bog down the PlayStation 4. That isn't to say SteamVR launched without issues. Once we installed ALVR, which works on Linux, and allows us to wirelessly connect our Quest 3 to SteamVR running on Linux, kind of like Virtual Desktop would do, except Virtual Desktop doesn't work on Linux, and installed those drivers, there was just a black screen inside the headset. Turns out we need some launch options that you can find on the ALVR wiki, and that actually fixed it. There was no black screen inside the Quest 3 anymore, and we could see Steam VR Home, or, you know, the mountainy place. But that wasn't the end of our problems. Whenever SteamVR crashed, and it crashed a lot, well, uh, you would have to do this. Give you an example of the kind of pain that's happening here. Steam just turned off my add-ons. Obviously, that means ALVR isn't working, and normally, that wouldn't actually be too much of an issue, because uh, on PC, you just launch the menu and you turn on your add-on. Here, that menu is just a black screen. So you have to go into Steam, and then here you have to find Steam VR settings, delete this file, and that will actually reset the add-ons. Look at that. Oh, well, it was there for a second. You just have to trust me on this. It is working inside the headset. That is a feature. Don't worry about that. Uh, we are doing 93. 3% CPUs, I call that good. And once you got that sorted, there was no dashboard, meaning you couldn't launch games. And not only could you not launch games through the Steam VR dashboard, because there was none, you couldn't launch them through Steam either. And neither could you launch them through the desktop icons. Yes, this was absolutely terrible. For whatever reason, once you were in Steam VR, well, you couldn't launch anything anymore. And I did get Neos to run once at like 2 a.m. And to this very day, I have no idea how I did it then. I'd say I just launched SteamVR at the exact same time I launched Neos. As a last Hail Mary, I decided to try Big 
picture mode, as I have heard that fixes a bunch of weird issues with Steam on the PlayStation 4. And in big picture mode, I was actually able to launch titles while in Steam VR, which was a massive win for me. Now, they still didn't run. Anytime I would launch something like Beat Safer, for example, it would load for 10 minutes and then just crash. And I don't mean the game would crash, I mean the entirety of Steam would crash, and you would have to start over. Steam took like five minutes to turn on, by the way. To this very day, Neos VR was the only title that would launch on the PlayStation 4. Yes, <laughs> we're starting Neos. This is the worst Neos experience you can have ever. And launch might actually be giving it too much credit. The first time it launched at 2 a.m., I was actually able to walk around in the game. I had controller support and I was sort of able to load into an instance. However, when I pressed play to join a world, well, that crashed the system. The second time, the textures took like 20 minutes to load, and when they did, I had no controllers. So that was quite painful. Yes, I did try its spiritual successor, Resonite. However, that didn't launch. So this is unfortunately where our journey ends. Can you run Steam VR on the PlayStation 4? Yes. Should you? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Please don't. This is a project that I'm happy that we went through. That being said, we might be revisiting this. If I manage to get my hands on a 512 gigabyte SSD and I go back, clone it, find out that it runs better than what it did now, then we might actually be re-recording a video on this. Currently, we tried running all of these titles through OpenVR, or at least most of them, and I have heard that Steam VR works a lot better on Linux through a different software that utilizes OpenXR. So we would be replacing ALVR with this other software that runs OpenXR games, however we would need Open Composite in order for that to happen, and it just gets quite a bit more complicated and takes even longer. And this already took the entirety of my weekend. That being said, I think Linux on the PlayStation 4 is a really, really cool project. I actually had fun playing certain titles on it, including things like Minecraft, and again, The Forest launched. So if you had no better way of playing these titles, you could definitely do it this way. If you like tinkering and are willing to drop your resolution down, a few, maybe more than a few resolutions, well then, I would certainly say, go ahead and try this. If you've got a PS4 that you're maybe not using anymore and haven't updated in a while, this might be a worthy project. Either way though, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so, so much for coming on this journey with me. I seriously enjoy uploading, tinkering around with things, making them do things they're not really supposed to, and then breaking them. Hopefully you guys enjoy it as well. So if you like this one, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess the phone works too, but let me know why down below. If you guys have any ideas on how to make this run better or things you would have done differently, also leave those down below or join our Discord where I sometimes leak these videos a little bit early or snippets of them actually, just a little bit early and yeah you could let me know there as well thank you so so much to all the patrons supporting this channel you guys are amazing seriously much love thank you so much for your support you are what makes this possible and as usual if you want to be notified of your content coming up on the channel make sure to smack that subscribe button with forehead ding my bell and see you in the next video peace oh okay well you just saw that this is basically what happens right so i'm still in the vr server but resonite just crashed so I'm going to assume that probably means no Resonite for us.